This is the story of how a Malaysian billionaire lost 20 million ringgit net worth in two years' time. The Kwan family. Yes, the family that built the largest natural glove company in the world. Hatta Lega Holdings Bahad. Today, we are going to talk about the history of rubber industry in Malaysia. The unknown history of the Kwan's family and how they built Hatta Legas to today's level and how Hatta Legas single-handedly changed the whole glove industry. Hey guys, it's Heshwai, your investing friend. This is the third episode of our Malaysian Corporate Histories. This is a series of videos that we are doing in collaboration with Firo. They will be covering top gloves so you can check them out. <laughs> Now let's turn back time to the end of 1890s. That time, Malaysia was still ruled by the British. There were two very big inventions at that time, car and rubber tire. These two big inventions caused the global demand for rubber to kaboom. However, Malaysia don't have any rubber tree growing in the wild at that time. So there is this guy called Sir Henry Wickham. He stole 70,000 rubber tree seeds when he was visiting Brazil in 1876. And he gave it to Sir Henry Nicholas Ridley, a geologist in Singapore. Nicholas then brings some of the rubber tree seeds to Malaysia and started planting. Rubber tree grew very well in Malaysia because of our weather and terrain. So the British started planting many 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 rubber trees in our country, such as Ah, interesting right? Many of these companies survive until today. Bouster is the Bouster group held by LTAT today. Harrison's and Crossfield is now known as Harrison Holdings Bahad. Jandarata Estate is now known as United Plantations. Saim Dabi merged with Gucci and become the Saim Dabi Bahad today. There are also many interesting stories about these companies and we will cover in our future topic. So make sure you hit like, subscribe and share. Also turn on notification so you don't miss out. Anyway, Malaysia has become the world's largest natural rubber producer by 1930s. Even after independence, rubber production has accounted more than 30% of the total employment and 60% of total export value. Until the 1980s, all the existing rubber producers started chopping off their rubber trees and they started planting oil palm because it was more profitable to plant oil palm than rubber trees. Since then, Malaysia rubber export value started to drop significantly. And this marked the end of the beginning, beginning of the rubber industry in Malaysia. Well, it was not all bad news for Malaysia. The implementation of NAP has incentivized many businesses in Malaysia to industrialize and move up the value chain. We were no longer just a natural rubber exporter. The number of firm manufacturing rubber products increased from 50 in 1970s 268 in 1984. At the same time in 1980s, HIV epidemic was happening around the world. This was almost same like COVID-19 that we experienced in the past three years, but not as serious lah. And the global demand for medical gloves kaboom! Many Malaysian businesses jump on the bandwagon and start producing and exporting rubber gloves. Our government also gave full support with 5-year tax-free break for glove companies. And by 1990s, there were over 250 glove companies in Malaysia, with one of them being Hatta Lega Holdings Berhad. Hatta Lega started by Kwan Kam Hon. We call him Mr. Kwan Laha. Mr. Kwan was born in 1947, two years after World War II. His father was a Tauke of a building construction business. He dropped out from high school and worked for his father when he was 22 years old. His father's construction business, Kwan Yuan and Sons Company, was well known to build quality homes. And it was said that people will queue up to buy houses that Mr. Kwan's father built. In 1978, Mr. Kwan left his father's business to start Timo Weaving Syndrome Berhad that manufacture woven label and batch. However, because of the reform of China towards the end of 1970s, the whole textile industry in the world was moving to China for cheaper labor. And this made the whole textile industry outside of China non-competitive anymore because of the cost. In 1981, Mr. Kwan wanted to expand from his father's business. So he started Hatta Lega with the intention of being a property development company. Just like the name, Hatta means property and Lega means relief. So Hatta Lega actually means a home that you can relief and feel safe. However, they were forced to do certain bad things to ensure that this property development business can continue. Mr. Kwan's father refused to do it because this was against his principles. So Hatalega was set aside. 
At the same time, Mr. Kwan noticed that the demand for rubber gloves was skyrocketing during the early years of AIDS epidemic in the 1980s. So in 1988, Mr. Kwan conveniently took the Hata Lega company and turned his stagnating woven label and batch manufacturing plant into a glove manufacturing plant with five glove production lines producing 307 million pieces of gloves every year. The first plant was located in Gepong. For the first 10 years of Hata Lega's existence, they are just like any other glove companies without any real competitive advantage. Even so, the glove business was too good with AIDS and then SARS outbreak. Hata Lega moved to Bestari Jaya in 1992 and built Bestari Jaya Plant 1 there. In 1997, they expanded and built Bestari Jaya Plant 2. However, Mr. Kwan want to do better or else when the raw material natural rubber increased, then they will suffer. Knowing this as a fact, Mr. Kwan started to look for other type of raw material with better price stability to produce rubber gloves. And that was when they identified nitro as a good option. Because the price of nitro don't fluctuate as much as natural rubber. But at that time, Nitro glove technology was too loud, yeah, not advanced at all. Nitro gloves was very thick and heavy at 7 grams. It was mostly used in the industrial and automotive sector with less than 5% of global market share. So Hatalega need to reinvent nitro glove from scratch to make it usable for medical practitioners. In 2002, Hatalega built a prototype room with prototype production line with all walls covered. Only Mr. Kwan, his family, and few of his trusted engineers can enter this prototype room. They went into intense R&D to recreate a new type of nitro glove. Every time when they finish their day and come out from the prototype room, they will lock all the doors and cover up all the windows to make sure their trade secrets were locked inside the room. They went on for one and a half year until they finally break through in 2004. They quickly built the production line in Bestari Jaya Plant 3. In 2005, they launched their first lightest nitro glove in the world. They caught all their competitors by surprise because no one knows that Hatalega was developing such gloves. The weight of Hatalega nitro glove of 4.7 gram was almost two times lighter than the normal nitro glove of 7 gram. What was even more interesting is actually Hatalega already invented 3.7 gram nitro glove, but they don't want to launch yet because they expected their competitors to catch up soon. It took their competitors 2 years to catch up with them and come up with 4.1 gram nitro glove in 2007. Then Hatalega Shui launched their 3.7 gram nitro glove and caught their competitors by surprise again. Chess game, bro! Don't put all your cards at once. The best part is Hatalega still haven't finished their combo against their competitors. When they built their new production line to produce their lightest weight, Nitro Glove by 2005. They also developed their own production line system that can manufacture gloves at a record speed of 28,000 pieces per hour compared to the industry average of 10,000 pieces per hour. And another punch threat on the face of competitors. Their competitors were so frustrated and they started to attend Hatalega's briefing. Their competitors wanted to copy them. Anyway, with all these achievements, Mr. Kwans was faced with two decisions. Number one is to sell the business. Number two is to continue to grow the business aggressively. So Kwan family had a family meeting. They sat down in a circle. They started to la la li li la tampo. They start to discuss what is their next course of action. Then Mr. Kwan sat down with his son, Kwan Man Leong, who is now the CEO of Hata Lega. We call him A Leong lah. Huh? So Mr. Kwan asked A Leong, Zai Zai, should we sell Hata Lega and enjoy life? Then A Leong tell him, Sell, this is the time that we should go big and grab the market. Mr. Kwan then feel assured with his son's own and agreed to list the company on Busa and go on expansion mode. So in 2008, Hatalega was listed on Busa, Malaysia Stock Exchange, in the midst of global financial crisis. But business was very good for Hatalega and they expanded into Bestari Jaya Plant 4. Their profit margin was double the industry average because their glove product mix mostly consists only natural glove which demand a higher margin and higher selling price. Efficiency was in the industry. They can now produce 33,000 pieces per hour compared to industry average of 12,000 per hour. From 2009 to 2012, business was again very good for Hata Lega due to H1N1 pandemic. Hata Lega expanded again with Bestari Jaya Plant 5 and 6. Their production line 
further improved to 45,000 pieces per hour. And in 2010, Hatta Lega became the largest natural glove producer in the world. They need to start looking for new plan if they want to expand because the land in Bastari Jaya is already running at full capacity. He finally decided that the new plan will be located in Sepang. Next Generation Integrated Glove Manufacturing Company, NGC. The Sepang land is around 100 acres, two times larger than their 55 acre Bestari Jaya land. There will be seven plants in NGC and they will open one by one so they won't grow into trouble. They committed to invest 2.2 billion ringgit into NGC over the years to increase Hatalega capacity by roughly 31 billion pieces to 44 billion pieces of gloves every year. One interesting about Hatalega when they was building the NGC plant was that other than the existing senior management team from Bestari Jaya, Aleong, only hire people outside from the glove industry. This was because they want to import better talent from other industries into Hatta Lega. Since then, Hatta Lega was on a home run. Their revenue, profit and share price has been on a very nice uptrend until 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic. I guess we all have the same memory for COVID-19. Stay home, do nothing when we go out to the streets. So empty, so quiet. But for Hatta Lega, it was different. Even though they experienced H1N1 pandemic, but the scale of COVID-19 was on next level. Business has never been so great. Demand for glove, kaboom! The waiting period for order book can go up to one year. Hatta Lega increased their capacity by speeding up their expansion plan of NGC. Before COVID, Hatta Lega only opened up to NGC plan 5. And that time, their production capacity was at 37 billion pieces every year. Because of COVID, Hatta Lega sped up their construction and operation of NGC plan 6 and 7. In 2021, they have all 7 plants up and running. Annual capacity pushed up to 44 billion pieces every year. Because glove demand was so good during COVID time, so Hatta Lega started a new expansion plan, NGC 1.5 and NGC 2.0. NGC 1.5 is located nearby NGC 1.0 in Sepang. Hatta Lega will build their NGC plant 8 to 11 over there. And during the peak of COVID-19, Hatta Lega decided to buy another 95 acres of land in Banting to build their NGC 2.0. This expansion plan will increase Hatta Lega capacity to 95 billion pieces by 2027. Just when you think everything is sunshine, dun dun dun, the tide starts to turn. In October 2020, COVID vaccine got invented at the fastest speed in the history. Many new glove makers joined the bandwagon and increased glove production capacity aggressively. China businesses started to manufacture gloves with their government support and cheap power costs. It only takes less than one year for gloves to go from extreme shortage to extreme oversupply. Fast forward to today, Hatta Lega was faced with intense competition from China competitors and also local glove makers. Malaysia once supplied almost 60% of the gloves in the world in 2020. In 2023, our glove market share has dropped to 40%. China is taking up the market share by selling it below market price. This has caused the average selling price of glove to drop significantly below cost. The more gloves that Malaysia glove company make, the more money that they lose. This was also the first time that Hatta Lega reported losses. Hatta Lega's share price dropped over 90% from 20 ringgit 28 cents to 1 ringgit and 41 cents. The Quan's family net worth has also usually by more than 20 billion ringgit in less than 2 years time. If the problem in the glove industry is oversupply, the best solution is to cut supply. So, Hatta Lega decided to shut down their Bestari Jaya plant that are old and not as efficient as their NGC plant. Hatta Lega is very determined in cutting cost, even though Bestari Jaya plants has around 30% of their capacity. By doing this, they can cut down oversupply and reduce cost in the long term. And after they closed down their Bestari Jaya plant, Hatta Lega started to report operating profit again. Even so, their management said that the oversupply issue will only resolve in year 2024 or 25. Now that we know the history of Hatta Lega, do you think Hatta Lega can defend their position from China glove companies? Or do you think the same thing will happen like when Mr. Kwan closed down their woven label and batch business after textile industry moved to China? It is important to remember that the glove industry as a whole will still grow in the long term. Glove consumption per capita in developed countries is 200 pieces every year. In most countries, the current glove consumption per capita is just 10 pieces per year. The market potential is still very huge. Maybe the question that we should ask is, will Hatta Lega remain to be the leader? 
let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you are interested in another glove company, Top Glove, check out Fyro's video. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Stay safe and stay strong investing. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.